Yes, President Joe Biden has warned his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin that he will not accept Russian red lines on Ukraine. This has fears mount that Russia is planning an imminent invasion of Ukraine. Biden says he will make it very, very difficult for Russia to invade its neighbor. Meanwhile, U.S. intelligence officials have warned that an invasion could begin in early 2022. It comes as Ukraine says Russia has boosted its military at the border, amassing some 94,000 troops. A video call between Putin and Biden is uh, expected next week in a bid to ease tensions. Biden told reporters that he is expecting to have a long discussion with the Russian leader and warned that he will not accept anybody's red lines. While Biden did not set out what precise actions the U.S. plans to take, American and Ukrainian officials warned again this week that severe economic sanctions are on the table against Russia. In other news, the United States has pulled out of the Vienna talks, which were aimed at returning Iran to comply with the JCPOA nuclear deal. The U.S. has accused Tehran of lacking seriousness at the talks. So the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says in the last couple of days, the U.S. has observed that Iran does not seem to be serious about what is necessary with respect to the nuclear deal. However, the top U.S. diplomat did not explain what he believed Iran was not serious about, adding that Washington will not let Tehran drag the process. He also cautioned that they will not um, allow Iran to advance its nuclear program. Blinken also informed, um, added that the U.S. will be consulting very closely and carefully with all of its partners in the process. He says they will see if Iran has any interest in engaging seriously. So to help us understand all of this, uh, we speak to Saeed Marandi, he's professor of English literature and Orient Orientalism at the University of Tehran. He speaks to us in Vienna, Austria. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us, Professor. So please help us unravel all of this. You have Tehran good that evening. is saying that it is there in Vienna. It has a mandate to stay and continue talks while the Western partners are saying they need to fly home to their various capitals and consult. Well, first of all, we have to keep in mind that the United States was not part of the talks. The United States left the JCPOA. The United States tore up the agreement. Trump did that and has been violating both the nuclear deal and a UN Security Council resolution in addition to that. And so have the Europeans, because the Europeans obeyed the United States, the European governments did as they were ordered by Trump, and they too violated the deal. So they violated the deal and violated a UN Security Council resolution that they ironically passed themselves. So the only country that has actually been abiding by the nuclear deal is Iran. And of course, the Russians and the Chinese have done their best to abide by the deal as well. But the Iranians from day one, when the deal was signed, it fulfilled its obligations. That's what the International Atomic Energy Agency said repeatedly. And then when the United States tore up the deal, the Iranians continued to abide by their obligations, even though the Europeans and the Americans were violating every single one of their commitments. So for a year, the Iranians continued to fully implement the deal. Then after a year, they gradually began to decrease their commitments in order to put pressure on the Europeans to put aside these violations and start implementing the deal. And when ultimately they saw there was no use in doing that, the Iranians ended their implementation. But the ending of the implementation of the nuclear deal was done in accordance with the deal. In other words, the Iranians used articles 26 and 36, which allowed Iran to exit implementing or end implementing its obligations when the other side is not abiding by its obligations. So when Iran was abiding by the deal and when Iran was not abiding by the deal, it has always worked within the framework of the deal, unlike the Americans and the Europeans. So 
Professor, as you've mentioned that the U.S. pulled out of this deal, and as I mentioned in the beginning that Iran says it, it's there, it has a mandate to continue negotiations, but that yet the Europeans are saying that they need to relay first to the United States the documents tabled by Iran. I believe there are two, that there is a third one. But, but let's just start from that standpoint. Is there... Uh, uh, already an imminent deadlock because uh, the Europeans are saying they need to relay the contents of these documents to the US first before they can continue with the talks. I don't think there is a deadlock, but we have to keep in mind that the Americans and the Europeans have never been honest. Before the deal was signed, uh, Obama was himself imposing his own maximum pressure sanctions, just like Trump did later on. And both Trump and Obama were targeting Iranian civilians. He was trying to make them suffer as much as possible. And then when the deal was signed, Obama began violating the deal from day one. On day one, actually, of the deal, the U.S. imposed further sanctions. And then the United States began to, under Obama, began to uh, threaten international financial institutions uh, across the world um, from in order to and telling them to refrain from cooperating with Iran. This was in clear violation of the deal. So the Europeans and the Americans were never honest, both uh, during the Obama period and during the Trump period. And the Biden period even though Biden was criticizing Obama and saying that leaving the deal was foolish and that this is only going to increase tensions and that uh, it's not going to have an impact on Iranian policy. Uh, ultimately, when he became president, Biden pursued the same policies as Trump. In other words, he's continuing with the maximum pressure campaign. So Biden is attempting to make ordinary Iranians suffer as much as possible so that he can get more from Iran more than what they bargained for in the nuclear deal. And this is the crux of the matter. This is the issue at stake. The Iranians are saying, we have signed a nuclear deal and the Americans and the Europeans are a part of that deal. And in fact, Biden was the vice president when the United States signed up to the deal. So the, the nuclear deal, the JCPOA is the compromise. But now the Europeans and the Americans want more from Iran. They pretend that they are trying to restart the nuclear deal. But in reality, they want to keep sanctions in place and they want Iran to go back to 2015. Whereas the Iranians are saying, no, if, we're going, if we go back to 2015, you have to come back to 2015 with us. So the Europeans and the Americans want their cake and they want to eat it too at the same time. So perhaps for those who are unfamiliar with not only the 2015 deal, what it stipulates, but particularly this point that um, uh, what the Iranians and the Americans are saying in terms of what has been negotiated now, for instance, uh, the US only wishing to lift sanctions which are inconsistent with keeping in place human rights and terrorism uh, designations. I I Iran saying that, I mean, it's, it's only natural that it's going to make proposals from its standpoint, its prism. What kind of human rights violations and terrorism are we talking about here that is impeding freedom within Iran? Well, the, the human rights violations are the maximum pressure campaign that, and maximum pressure and sanctions that, the, that Trump and Biden are imposing. These are crimes against humanity. These have killed many Iranians in hospitals. It's prevented them from obtaining or purchasing medicine, their medicines. Uh, these are uh, devastating crimes. But uh, the Europeans and the Americans can obviously do whatever they want across the world and they can get away with it. They can destroy Libya. They can sanction Venezuela. They can support coups across the world, uh, like in Bolivia. And they can make the people of Cuba suffer, invade Iraq, invade Afghanistan, destroy Syria through a dirty war and help the Saudis destroy Yemen and create and bring about the greatest genocide in contemporary 
history in the in Yemen, yet they have the audacity and the shamelessness to talk about human rights. The, the sanctions, whether they're the U.S. sanctions against Iran, whether they're for the nuclear program or they are about Iran's defense capabilities or regional alliances or so-called human rights or uh, Iran's missile technology, all of it was a part of the U.S. maximum pressure campaign. Trump wanted to bring Iran to its knees and force Iran to sign a new nuclear deal. They just use different labels for different sanctions. And the Iranians are calling out the Americans and the Europeans and saying, "We, you know and we know that all of these sanctions have nothing to do with anything but the fact that the United States wanted to bring Iran to its knees in order to get, in order to force Iran to appease Western countries. So the Iranians are saying that's not going to happen. You cannot just change labels. One day say it's human rights, the next day say it's nuclear energy, the next day, the next, the day after that, call it uh, missile technology. The United States and the Europeans signed a nuclear deal, the JCPOA, in 2015, where in it they promise they are committed to facilitating Iran's business and trade in return for Iran limiting, putting limits on its nuclear program. So all of these sanctions are in violation of, it, of their commitments in the nuclear deal. But this is not something that you're going to see in the Western media. This is not something that you're going to see Western pundits say. They're all like an orchestra and they're, and they're basically in harmony with one another, creating a, a false image of reality, a caricature of reality. But the reality is that the real truth is that the Iranians are not going to give anything more than what they've already promised in the nuclear deal. If let's the look, let's and look the at Americans what they've serious, promised. Let's look at what they've promised because uh, there's an allegation that Iran is being maximalist here, that it's walking back on agreements made by two different administrations. Why? by former President Rouhani and now what's been drafted by President Raisi. What are your thoughts about this? Are there gaps that exist? And can those, quote unquote, gaps be closed within real time? No, the, the Europeans and the Iranians negotiated and discussed a draft with many brackets and Nothing was agreed upon because until everything is agreed upon, nothing is agreed upon. The Iranians in this round of negotiations brought forth two texts to complete that draft. That draft, which was full of brackets, which was negotiated in six rounds six months ago, had elements within it that were in conflict with the JCPOA, the fundamental agreement that the two sides or the the four plus one in Iran have, and the Americans had once upon a time when, when they were in the agreement. So the Iranians are saying the nuclear deal is priority over a uh, draft full of brackets that has not been agreed upon. So the Iranians corrected those elements within uh, that draft that were in conflict with the nuclear deal, and in those areas in which there, it was gray and unclear, the Iranians filled out those elements. But the Iranians said that these two drafts that they have presented are only 20, 30 percent different from the original drafts. And they can be negotiated. But what Iran is saying in these two draft texts is that we only want what the JCPOA gives us. The drafts are, do not demand anything more than what the JCPOA mm. already gives to Iran. The Europeans and the Americans are playing a game. They don't want Iran to get what they promised to give Iran. They want to give Iran less than what they promised Iran. So the Iranians Which are is what? basically saying, we go back to the, the Americans and the Europeans want to keep a lot of the sanctions that they put in place after the nuclear deal was signed as a part of the maximum pressure campaign because they want to keep their hands on the throats of ordinary Iranians. They want to keep the pressure on Iran. The Iranians are saying, no way. You have to accept what was agreed upon in the JCPOA. A an agreement is an agreement. You, In fact, the Iranians are saying if anyone has to compromise, if anyone has to give 
concessions. It's the Western countries. They violated the deal. They caused hundreds of billions of dollars, dollars of damage to the Iranian economy, even though the Iranians were committed to the deal. Yet they pretend as if it's Iran that has to give concessions or that Iran has to compromise. The Iranians say we've already compromised. The JCPOA is a compromise. You broke the deal. You caused damage. You are in no position to ask for us to give you more. Russia's uh, chief negotiator, whom uh, you seem to have been echoing there, saying that, you know, nothing is agreed upon until everything is agreed upon, is saying that it's a little bit too premature to talk about disappointment. Let's look at the balance of power at this negotiation table and who will be able to push the process further, because that's what uh, Ambassador Mikhail Yulianov says, that... Uh, the talks have to be calibrated in such a way that progress is made. What would you define as progress within this framework? And uh, where do you think that first solver will come from? Well, the Russians and the Chinese have been supporting Iran's position. And they've been saying that the United States and the Europeans have to remove all sanctions and go back to 2015. The Iranians are saying that we have to go back to 2015. But the problem with the Americans and the Europeans is that they think that they can still get more than was bargained for. But the reality on the ground is that time is not on their side. The Europeans are and the Americans are facing deep internal problems. In the United States, we see political, economic, and cultural divisions that are extremely deep. And we know that the few and in future, if Trump is reelected, which under these circumstances is quite possible, then what will happen to the deal? The Iranians are saying, you have to give us assurances that you're not going to, someone is not going to rip up the deal in, in future again or impose new sanctions under different names. But, but in any case, the United States has major problems at home. It's facing a rising China, a rising Russia, and the United States is their regional allies are on the decline, the Saudis and others. So the United States is not in an ideal situation. They can't fight a war with Iran. They've, we saw what happened in Afghanistan. And the Israeli regime is too small and puny to, to carry out any attack on Iran without being severely punished. So the smart thing for the United States to do as the balance, balance of power in the region and across the globe is tilting away from it, is to strike a deal. And that is the JCPOA. But the United States and the Europeans out of their imperial arrogance, uh, they still think that they can get more than they deserve. Instead of apologizing to the people of Iran, the Europeans, these European governments and these regimes and the Americans and the, the American government and their regime, instead of apologizing to Iranians for murdering so many Iranians through these brutal and inhumane, barbaric and Trumpian sanctions and compensating the Iranian people, they demand more. And as they foolishly demand more, the Iranian nuclear program continues to make uh, quick progress right. and uh, significant development.